Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. In the news. Well, as promised, our history before it happens, top trends of 2015 conference is on the air. And boy, oh boy, people are really watching it in record numbers. We're really happy. The quality, the production value, and the trend value. Remember, what's going on in the Earl market, you heard it first here, and it's another down day. Oil was up, and now it's down. West Texas is at $59 a barrel. And when you look at the numbers, whew, all of a sudden you're seeing layoffs across the board. BP announced it, one after another. They're cutting back. They're cutting back. Bloomberg, Fed bubble bursts in $550 billion of energy debt credit markets. Since 2010, energy producers have raised $550 billion of new bonds and loans as the Federal Reserve held borrowing costs near, you know the number, zero. Borrowing costs for energy companies now have skyrocketed in the past six months. It's been super cheap for energy companies to obtain financing over the past five years, said Brian Gibbons, a senior analyst for oil and gas at credit sites in New York. Now companies with ratings of B or below, quote, are virtually shut out of the market. And here's some numbers for you. Employment and support services, this is only in the U.S. For oil and gas operations, surged 70% since the U.S. expansion began in June 2009, while oil and gas extraction payrolls have climbed 34%. So those extractions are going into contractions. So is this helping the market? Yes, it is, because the Dow is up today on retail sales. That's right. Some people have a little bit extra scratch, and they're buying more stuff with it. But the markets were way up, and now they're up about 70, 80 points. And gold, gold was down. Now it's flat. So what's going over there in Asia? Asian shares lower on oil slump and poor Japanese data. That's right. Wonder why. Japan's leading gauge of capital spending snapped the four-month rising streak in October. Core machinery orders fell 6.4%, worse than expectations for a 2.4% decline. Abenomics ain't working. And on that fracking stuff, North Dakota regulators tell producers to filter crude Oil before transporting. Yeah, great. Guess what? As these oil prices go down and as these companies want to save more money, you're going to start seeing more and more accidents. The rail system in this country stinks already, and they're going to do less and less to repair it as their profit margins get slimmer and as they fire people. So, you know what that'll do? Nothing. And good news, good news, congressional budget just slipped one right through there. They welcome big bank bailouts. Congress has agreed to use federal deposit insurance. That's right. It's not only us that are being insured now. They're going to cover risky trading by the nation's biggest banks. 
Did Congress agree to allow banks to house their trading of swaps and derivatives alongside consumer deposits, which were insured by the federal government? Bankism. You got it right here in your top trends for 2015. They read our minds. It's a banking takeover. And check it out. The derivative business, 95% of the trading in derivatives are done by the five biggest banks, which became bigger thanks to Too Big to Fail. And they are Bank of America, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and J.P. Morgan. Isn't that wonderful? And here's a nice one for you. They slipped another one in there, in that budget bill. The FBI gets another $93 million. Yeah, to protect us. And the Drug Enforcement Agency. Oh, yeah, that war on drugs that they keep losing and throwing people in jail and ruining their lives for nothing. And again, I want drug tests for all of Congress. Yeah, what are you taking? What's making you people so crazy? What drugs are you on? I demand it as an American to have drug tests. I want to see what Pelosi's shoving down her mouth and along with Lindsey Graham and John Insane McCain. What makes these people so crazy? Let's put that drug enforcement money into seeing what our lunatic senators, congressmen, and presidents are on. And on the good news, of course, they cut the EPA budget by $60 million. No environmental protection, I say. Give them a free ride. Frack away. More pollution. More... I wonder why people die of cancer. I don't know why. You can't figure it out. And over there across the water in Ireland, nice little story here in the Wall Street Journal. Irish sputter. I love the language. Overpaying for water supply. 30,000 people showed up yesterday to protest. They got water bills now. They never had them before. Hey, you got to bail out those big guys like they did over there. You remember? Yeah. Austerity measures. We made $90 billion worth of bad debts, and you got to pay for our losses. We are the bank. Anglo. Anglo-Irish. Yeah. Yep. They got it one after another, and now the people are paying for it with their money and their water. Sounds like Detroit to me. Disgusting. Yep, new poll out. Many Americans feel American dream is slipping out of reach. Why, I am shocked. How can this possibly be? Let's see here. Only 64% of respondents said they still believe in the American dream, the lowest result in over two decades. Even at the depth of the financial crisis in 2009, 72% of Americans still believed that hard work could result in riches. Yeah, sure, it can, but not very easy anymore. By the way, new movie out. Poverty, Inc., a Gary Knoll production, written up by the New York Times. Great reviews. If you get a chance, I recommend you see it because I'm in it as well. And so is Chris Hedges, a number of great people, Ralph Nader. Terrific movie. And it's right here, what we said before when he made this movie. Yeah, here's some more data from that. How much confidence do you have in the federal government's ability to regulate financial institutions. Well, 4% of the people believe they do. And the whole nation is in debt. Yeah, I guess those 4% are probably the payoff flunkies in Congress that give them a free ride, and the bankers. Now, the numbers are staggering here. Nobody believes in anything, and good reason why. Since the polls show that slim 52% majority of Americans think the country's economic system is fair, 45% think it's unfair. That's where the country's going. And for good reason, because you got grubbers and grubbers. You know that little slimy man? Yeah, that 
guy who pushed through Obamacare. Oh, yeah. Didn't make much of the news, but he's apologizing for saying that we are stupid and that because there's no transparency, they could shove anything they want down our throats. So he goes to Congress and here's what he said. Remember, he refers to American stupidity and he said, quote, I sincerely apologize both for conjecturing with a tone of expertise and for doing so in such a disparaging fashion. It's never appropriate to try to make oneself seem more important or smarter by demeaning others. You know what that is. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Yeah. This is a guy that the CIA should torture. All these little low-life cats, man, one after another. Once they get caught, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. You apologize for nothing. The only thing you apologize is for getting caught. You're a little low-life, slimy boy, Gruber, and I'll tell you that to your face. 57 John Street, Kingston, New York. Let's talk about it, Junior. There's not a man among you out there. Every one of you are little cowards that shoot off your mouth with a lot of protection around you. That's right. And... Speaking of shooting off their mouth with a lot of... Bullshit level, DEFCON 5! Dick, or I should be proper, I should be proper, I know, Penis, Penis Cheney is coming out and saying that CIA report, yeah, it's full of crap. I say he's full of crap. Or is he full of penis? You're in Cheney, maybe that's it. Yeah, full of crap, huh? Oh, yeah, what else does he say? He said that um, it helped the United States, quote, catch the bastards who killed 3,000 of us on 9-11. Hey, how many people has the United States killed since 9-11? Penis? Or is it urine? Ah, dick is good enough for you. Dick? Yeah. This sick bastard out there shooting his mouth off and he gets a free ride. The report says what it says. The facts are there. What, what do they call this thing? Rectal rehydration? Ah, oh, Hitler would have loved that one. And they love it in America. Everyone, and Obama, the sellout, the sellout. Yep, he's pulling back on it. Well, let the report speak for itself, he says, because we are the exceptionals. Yep. Here he goes. Obama acknowledged that no nation is perfect, but argued one of the strengths that makes America exceptional is our willingness to obey, confront our past, face our imperfections, make changes, and do better. But we're going to let this one slide. We're not going to bring anybody up on trial. We'll give them a free ride. But don't you do anything wrong. Be a good girl and boy. Yeah, isn't it wonderful, huh? The report's full of crap. Hey, you know it's not making a lot of the news? Yeah, it's Israel keeps bombing Syria, but that's okay. Yeah, and you know what else they did? Yeah, they just killed a Palestinian official dies after confrontation. Here's the language that they use. Palestinian official Ziad Abu N scuffles with Israeli border policemen during a protest near West Bank city of Ramallah on Wednesday scuffles. The guy chokes him to death. Then they say they beat him with rifles. Scuffle. All I can say is a good thing he wasn't an Israeli official because then they would be screaming murder. But it's okay. It's only another dead Palestinian. Who cares? It's like them dead Russian 
Ukrainians over there, nobody cares about them. And, of course, gets a free ride. Yep. And Yalan hints at serious strike. Israel will get anyone who arms our enemies. Yay! Speaking at an event honoring Israelis wounded in war on terror, Yalan made an unusually direct reference to alleged strikes, saying that whoever f- tries to arm our enemies should know we will reach any place at any time to thwart their plans. Yeah, isn't that great? Nobody should be able to defend themselves. Only Israel has the right to defend themselves. Oh, and by the way, as they skew this story, the occupiers, the settlers, they're stealing more Palestinian land, and that's what these people were protesting. But the way they write it, oh no, they attacked settlers and were protesting. It's only the media, and the media is also caught, of course, lying for the CIA. That is also in that report of how the CIA uses the media to sell their story. What a surprise. I am shocked. And finally, U.S. still sending arms to Thailand despite the coup. And just to make it official, it's illegal under U.S. law to send military armaments to countries that have been thrown over in a military coup. But, hey, we're the exceptionals. And look, if it's good enough to do for Egypt, it's good enough for Thailand. Oh, and another little story that didn't make the news. Amnesty International says Israeli strikes on Gaza buildings are war crimes. But no, they're not. No, not when the Israelis do it, not when the Americans do it. Hey, you got the chosen people and the exceptionals. Just another day of hypocrisy. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's Trends in the News. She's my music making mama, I'm her hillbilly boy She's sweeter than the music when she tickles the strings Sweeter than the flowers down in New Orleans She's my music making mama from Memphis, Tennessee She'll play a little rhythm, do the boogie upright A Tennessee polka, maybe blues in the night Everybody